This weekend I was invited up to the Northwest Computer Museum in Lee just outside Manchester. As mentioned in my previous video, I love this kind of stuff anyway, but I was particularly tempted by their jumble sale and the opportunity to pick up some bargains. More on that soon. But first, I really want to talk about this amazing venue. Spinner's Mill is a Grade 2 listed cotton mill dating back to 1913, and is still partly in use as a mill today. The top four floors are in the process of being refurbished and converted with artist spaces, cafes, workshops, a gym and even a cinema, and of course the Northwest Computer Museum, and who better to ask about this incredible building than the museum's founder, Joe. This space that you have here is absolutely amazing. What's the story behind it? The mill was built uh, around 110 years ago. Um, it was obviously a cotton mill uh, and uh, basically it's had five floors and it, as technology become better, uh, they started going down on one level, down one level and so on. Uh, so now they're actually still here, but they're on the ground level. So obviously they had a massive mill, which literally was going to rack and ruin. A trust took over the mill and has basically been, over the last four years, uh, has been developing units within the, on the floors. Uh, we're actually on the fourth floor. Uh, there's five floors, so the fifth floor will be um, complete next year, but uh, we will be open and completed within the next couple of months, hopefully before Christmas. As you can see, the museum space is still very much under construction. They've unfortunately had a few setbacks over the past couple of years, as we all have, but are now on track to be open by Christmas. So I asked Joe where it all started and what his vision was now things were back up to speed on the building work. It started about four or five years ago when I had the idea. Um, it was actually only an idea, uh, except I mentioned it to a friend who then mentioned it to somebody else. And uh, by the time I realised, uh, this boulder had started moving and uh, more and more people wanted to know about it. Ended up with speaking to the chief exec of Wigan Council and it all started from there. So obviously I thought, mm, maybe I should go ahead with this. One of, one of the things which I really wanted to, you know, uh, pass on to people who wanted to visit or will visit is the history and the timeline of the computers from 1970s. I mean, I started computers in 78 at school. We had a Tandy TRS-80 Model 1, and I just fell in love with this. And it's literally just started from there. Uh, the first computer I ever owned, uh, or what my mum and dad bought me, was a Commodore VIC-20. And yes, I still have fuzzy feelings around that. Um, so I want to allow people to not only learn about computers, but experience computers, what I experienced. We were working with other museums uh, down in Cambridge, um, in uh, Netherlands, uh, Germany. So we are actively talking and, you know, looking at future projects together. Uh, we also have a internet cafe, um, because one of the things which we want people to do is spend the day here. So when you've been around the museum, uh, you've sat on a Commodore 64 for a couple of hours and you, you can go and have a little coffee and something to eat, you can come back in. One of the things which I want to do is to work with the community and um, in this day and age, you know, where people can't afford much nowadays, is that we are offering uh, a facility within, in our community area so people can actually use computers, printers and internet free of charge and keep warm as well. As well as the historical side of things, Joe and his team of volunteers are very keen to involve the local community, and in particular schools, with educational workshops teaching programming skills and electronics. The educational suite is not only learning about programming, uh, i.e. basic and going on to like C and so on, but uh, also electronics, you know, how do chips work, you know, what, what are resistors and so on, uh, and also creating applications for VR. On that note, the museum has also created a range of DIY electronics kits which will be available to purchase so kids and adults alike can continue to follow along with their in-house educational programme at home. Wandering around the museum, I can see some new construction. Joe tells me he's built these two rooms himself. So I asked what the plan was for these spaces. In one of the rooms, uh, we also have a, um, a 1980s and a 70s office. You can actually sit down, use the computers of that time, and you can actually see how technology changed, even in the business world, within the two decades. 
We've also got a arcade as well, a mini arcade, so you can actually experience what we experienced back in the 80s uh, on the old um, Space Invaders and um, uh, as my favourite Defender. It has been a long process uh, to get there to where we are now because unfortunately as all we all have uh, you know we have suffered from covid and we have lost two years um, so yeah it's it's not been an easy ride thankfully things are very much looking up for the northwest computer museum and their first public event was this jumble sale down on the second floor which they've put on this weekend to clear out some excess stock and also to raise some funds to help get them over the finish line with the last few bits and pieces that they need like electrics and carpets there was still a fair bit left at the end of the day after i'd done the tour and whatnot for example in amongst the boring modern stuff i came across these very nice autos cpm machines they also had a big pile of rather rusty and i'm told not working commodore pet disk drives right next to these compact luggables. How about this Philips video pack console from 1983? I'm actually regretting not grabbing this. A couple of Amstrad emailers, brand new in box, which is the best place for them, other than landfill. Nice to see Atari represented with some Excel machines and, of course, the obligatory 2600s. And this rather nice Commodore PET, which I'm told was complete when they put it out, but was somehow missing a key by the end of the day, which is sad to see, and I hope the person who stole it burns in silicon hell for all eternity. Anyway, let's not dwell on that. IBM was of course well represented with a selection of XT and AT machines, more on those in a second, and I particularly enjoyed this Christmas window projector thing. Yep, apparently someone actually donated that. Lots of assorted stuff, game controllers, some cassette games and a big old pile of laptops. This Wii speaker set was uh, interesting, I guess. I particularly enjoyed rummaging through this box of old cards, and I was surprised to see that they still have S3 Verge cards left at the end of the day. I would have thought they'd be the first things to go. Apparently this is a 1960s hairdryer. Indeed. Oh, I thought this big old VHS camcorder was really cool too. And of course, they also had their own mugs and merchandise for sale as well. So, I ended up getting back pretty late from Manchester, and it's been a couple of days now, but uh, I wanted to show the stuff that I bought at the Jumble sale. Now, I didn't actually go in expecting to spend a huge amount of money, um, but it was the end of the day and I was just leaving and Joe basically collared me and was like, oh, you gotta take this, you gotta take that, you gotta take that. So, I did end up picking up a few bits and pieces. So, let's have a look at them. First up we have not one but two IBM PC ATs and uh, this is a model that I don't have. Um, I've got the original XT and I've got the XT286 which uh, I've, I've covered both of those on the channel previously. And uh, yeah, I suppose it was inevitable that I would get my hands on an AT at some point. And the really cool thing about these is that uh, some of them were donated from another museum that had the cases powder coated and the finish on these is, is absolutely fantastic. It's exactly the right colour, it's exactly the right finish. Uh, they, they do look brand new. So I picked up this second one which has quite a few bits missing uh, just for that powder coated case which this one doesn't have. This one hasn't been opened up, uh, it's still got all the screws in it, they didn't know what was inside it, I don't know what, what was inside it, um, so I guess we'll find out in a future video. And on that note, there's also a 5150, an IBM XT. Uh, now, of course, I already have one of these. And again, it's got one of those really nice powder coated cases. So even though the rest of it is really grubby uh, and it's quite rusty inside and the motherboard looks in quite a bad way from what I've seen, um, it does have that lovely powder coated case. So that will be going on to my XT. It also has some kind of RAM expansion card in it, which I haven't really had a proper look at yet, uh, but they're always quite handy to have. So. Uh, I thought, yeah, I'll grab it for that. Also, uh, I've just spotted it's got the hard drive in it, so maybe that'll work, maybe it won't, probably not, but uh, certainly some fun stuff to potentially explore on the channel in the future. <coughs> Two Atari 2600 Lite 6s, that's the uh, six switch 
wood grain model, of course quite common. Um, one of them is really filthy, uh, one's actually quite clean and quite nice. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with these yet. Um, they were quite insistent that I took them, um, obviously being an Atari guy and whatnot. Uh, I think what I probably will do um, is fix them up and mod them and sell them, uh, maybe raise some money for the museum uh, for their opening. Uh, so potentially a charity auction at some point in the future. Um, I haven't discussed that with them yet, but um, I'll, I'll just throw the money at them if they say no. So, yeah, two Atari 2600s. Yep, I bought the S3 Verge cards. Uh, and the reason for that is because the S3 Verge video that I made a couple of years ago really put my channel on the map and it was kind of one of my first successful videos. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, I went through and found every single game that was uh, designed for this very early 3D accelerator card, um, quite, quite often referred to as a 3D decelerator card because they were, uh, <laughs> they were quite notoriously bad. And the card that I used for that was a Verge DX, which just happened to come in a PC that I'd bought at the time. Now this, what I've actually found here is the original S3 Verge and a Verge VX, which was one that came after the DX. And apparently these are, these are particularly bad. So I thought, why not complete the set? And maybe at some point I can make a video about those. Um, but I couldn't just leave them there after they've been sat in that box all day. So S3 Verges. Yep, I bought the pet and a disk drive, uh, which I don't have a cable for, unfortunately. Apparently they're very rare. Um, again, zero intention of actually buying this going in, uh, but it was as I was leaving, Joe was very insistent and uh, who could say no to a face like that? So yes, I'm now the proud owner of an incomplete Commodore pet with a missing key and an exploded capacitor. So hopefully that'll be fun to take a look at on the channel. Uh, of course, the screen has really bad screen burn. I'm, I'm not sure if you can see that actually. Um, so I'll probably need to track down a new tube, uh, a new green screen tube for a tube swap on that. And it uh, should be a fun one to get up and running. I'm not sure there's really a lot that you can actually do with them. Um, I don't really know anything about the pet at all, but uh, might be a fun one to learn about and um, get it up and running and, and do something do something with it. So yeah, big thanks to Joe at the Northwest Computer Museum and of course his amazing team of volunteers for uh, putting that event together and of course for putting the museum together as well uh, and particularly Jack for reaching out to me and inviting me inviting me over for that event and to uh, cover their progress so far. Of course I'm going to stay in touch with them, I'm going to be making future videos uh, just covering the build of the museum and of course the grand opening so that should be really interesting. Uh, I'm also potentially helping them out in setting up YouTube and, and podcasts and that kind of stuff as well so really really cool so yes big thanks as always to my patrons and channel members for making things like this possible particularly uh, purchases of equipment that will be covered on the channel because it's very very much appreciated uh, and it keeps these videos rolling which is fantastic and uh, yeah I think I will leave the final word with Joe so yeah if you are in the area pop in and uh, come and see me and you never know you might get a coffee out of it Should we just go for a pint instead?